first of all, read the uh, traditional Christmas stories out of uh, Luke, because I think that's the one that uh, most of us are most familiar with. So chapter 2 of Luke, first 20 verses. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this was the taxing first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, you would be with us this, this uh, important and significant day when we honor the, the uh, coming of our Savior in the form of a small child. We just pray for blessing on each home and family that is here. And uh, we pray, too, that Jesus would be more real to us than in any other time in our lives, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> well, I was all over the place trying to come up with something to, uh, to talk about. And if I talked about everything that I had come up with, uh, we'd still be here next year. So I don't want to do that. And I'm going to try to uh, abbreviate this. I do want to make one comment. Something. Uh, you know, this church building will be 100 years old next year. 100 years old. And think of that and all the things that have happened in, in this particular building. Something to be thankful for. The last few years, it just seems like there's been a change in the rhetoric not only among people outside the church, but even in the church. And uh, one of the words that has been so common is the word hate. 
You know, it's like it doesn't mean anything. You can say, well, I hate everybody that did this, or I hate everybody that did that. Uh, one that caught my attention was that uh, anybody that, that voted for a particular person hates America and hates God. And lo and behold, I was one of those people. And I'm going to tell you that I don't hate my country and I don't hate God. I've been in this church for 80 years. We came to Colton when I was four. And that this is where we came to Sunday school. And so it was, it's always been important to me. And I still remember that my first Sunday school teacher, Aunt Emily, which would be Miss Zales, uh, great aunt. And uh, I remember, too, that um, uh, the Sunday school superintendent, and I mentioned that in the history book and the song that in my heart there rings a melody. And that stuck with me all these years. To me, that's one of those times when, when you see the glory of God in the lives of somebody else, and, and it touches you. And it has a long, long-term effect on you. When we do the Christmas story, I, I really like, I guess, the, the story as uh, covered in the Gospel of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, it says, whosoever. Some people think that uh, God has picked everybody out already. You know, who gets to be saved and who isn't. And that it's like God playing some big computer game up there or something. That's not true. It says, whosoever. And it doesn't make any difference what race they are, what ethnic group they are. It doesn't make any difference whether they're Republican or Democrat, by the way. It doesn't matter. God loves everybody. And quite frankly, when he, when he came into the world, it wasn't just for us, you know, the American people, and especially those that are just white, but it's everybody including the, uh, the people on the street in Portland, including those people that are in the uh, penitentiary down in Salem, doesn't make any difference. He was sent into the world for all of us. And that, that's the thing that is so important, I think, about it. It shows the love of God for us. I mean, he, he opened up heaven and, and sent his begotten son to come down to this earth to uh, end up on the cross for our sins. He gave us a second chance. And, you know, the, the great commandment is that uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and... Uh, Strength is added to that. What it, what it means is that with our whole being, that's how we should love God. Because that's how he loved us. And uh, the rest of that, and, and Dale likes to point out, sometimes we leave things out. The second is like unto that. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, the world needs love. It really does. And I, I, I wish it would be said of our church right here that see how those people down there love one another. Wouldn't that be something if they did that? And there are, there are people. You know, I, I, and I'm going to point out Matt because I don't know a Sunday goes by that he's here that he doesn't say, I love you, Uncle Larry or Aunt Dory. Uh, he, he always says that. 
And I believe it. I believe it. And I believe that's because he is doing what that second commandment said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's make that a part of our agenda, not only for, for our own lives, but for our church. And we're going to serve our second hundred years in this building. And I wouldn't care if it's still here a hundred years from now, but I probably won't be here with it. Somebody else will have to be here. You will. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I, uh, I'm not going to go on. I said this would be brief. It's going to be brief. I, I ask that we sing a song. And, and, and I, wa I want us that when we sing it, uh, is it on the screen? That we would uh, join hands in a circle like we have done in the past and that we sing it together. And, and I, I want uh, Pastor Dale to close us in prayer too. At that time, you, you have to engineer that, though. I want to, one, one other thing I want to note is, you know, back in the nine, 1960s, we had our first camp beyond uh, Charlottesdale. I think it was at Dressel Glen, isn't that right, Marion? You remember that far back? Um, and there, was, there were two people that showed up at that camp that made it one that, at least in my mind and heart, I've never forgotten. There was a young man that uh, came up from the uh, Medford Faith Church. Probably some of you don't even know there was one, but there was. His name was Matt Patrick. And he had a, a glowing... Uh, testimony. And he made a difference in that camp. He really did. There was also a young lady there from Dowling Park. She had been an orphan and had been raised there. I think her name was June. Somebody, you old folks, uh, there's a couple of you. A couple of you guys are old and as old as me. Um, she too made a great difference and she and I believe she's the one introduced everybody to this song, Pass It On. And that became sort of the theme song for that camp. We've had other camps, you know, that stood out over the years. And, it, and you could just feel the presence of God's love. And, uh, and we've had things, occasions right here. And the same, same thing has happened. Let's pray that this Christmas will be a time when we renew our love not only for, for God, but to each other.